Bass Hard and Heavy Music Fans, and welcome to episode 19 of the Heavy Bass Stack Podcast. I'm your host, Dante, and I'm here with my co-host, Mr. David Andrew Langley. We back. We, we back. Are we back? I, I would say don't call it a comeback, but after 10 months, this is most definitely a comeback. Yeah, it's something for sure. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, I counted <laughs> from the last episode. It was fucking October of and last year. Even longer for me. Yeah, like I did like one, one episode, episode. <laughs> with some other jokers, and it went fucking terrible. It was the most listened to episode ever had, but that was more so due to the topic of the time than <laughs> any of their input, to be honest. I, I, I listened to it a little bit. I won't talk bad about it. <laughs> I'll talk bad about it. It was <laughs> fucking like, I thought like, okay. I've watched paint dry before. <laughs> was like, I, I did it with my coworkers. I don't know if they'll even listen to this. It'll be, I'll tell them later. It'll be kind of funny. <laughs> but like with uh, two of my coworkers, uh, Cyrus and Josh. And uh, I thought Cyrus knew about metal, but he's more of a straight up punk guy. And fucking Josh... He knows about the popular metal stuff, but not as much as needed for this type of podcast. Well, sometimes you get people on uh, on microphones or whatever, and they're either like, uh... Yeah, they, they, <laughs> there's, there's, surprisingly, there is an art to this, to the, to the gap. Uh, yeah, uh, the art of bullshit. Yeah, like... Uh, I got a PhD in bullshit. <laughs> there were so many tangents, especially Cyrus is the worst one, because he was... He went on so many tangents during that f- fucking episode. He went on like a five minute tangent about like staying in a house in Las Vegas or something that Blink-182 stayed in once and there was something about ostriches. I don't fucking remember. And that should be entertaining. But it it- should have been entertaining, but it wound up being like, where was that story going, bro? Where was that going? <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, welcome back to the Heavy Haystack Podcast. We are back after a long, long hiatus. Uh, rule of thumb, if you have a podcast, don't wait 10 months after your most popular episode to do another one uh because that's not usually how you get uh momentum rolling like <laughs> with this type of stuff uh but we're back uh trying a new format which is basically like the old format just not talk about every single little thing that happens every week uh, and uh, on a personal note i just don't want to be as hateful as <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I uh, historically have been. For those who I know negativity sales, but goddamn, dude. Uh, David's gone through a. He's he's Mister Positivity now. Trying to be, Mister Positivity. But yeah, this uh, we picked a good week to come back. I'd say because there is a lot of uh, cool, interesting well, stuff. Let's say I wasn't even supposed to come back, and then all the cool, interesting stuff happened. And I was like, well. Hey, you want to do that thing we used to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to try to do this solo and just make this extra boring of just like me yapping on the fucking microphone. But like in a certain time when I was actually trying to do one, David said, hey, I feel like doing a podcast talky thing again. I'll say with multiple layers of my childhood, fucking put out good tunes and tours get announced. You're like, oh, all right, all right, all right. I got I got the positive things to talk about. <laughs> positive tivity. We're starting this bringing this back on a good note i'll still find a way to shit on something oh there's gonna be there, there's right, always yeah. something like this is the one positive so then it's back to shitting on everything <laughs> uh but uh for everybody here in the metal world uh the story that you all probably already heard a million times over by this point uh you probably know about that whole uh certain paris olympics opening ceremony satan uh, satan oh no Satan think and- about the children, please. <laughs> the band that talks about saving the earth is going to fucking rapture us all. Uh, the hilarious irony of like people calling the opening performance, well, at least the, at least the Gojira part of the opening performance, satanic, is so hilarious if you know I, who Gojira is. There's so much misguided fucking... <sighs> <laughs> the entire Olympics like <laughs> ceremony thing has just been a fucking absolute shit show of media. I've been loving the meme stuff from it. The memes have been fire. Fucking, we got, like, the positive is, like, Gojira being awesome at the Olympic ceremony. There's been fucking, like, the Turkish shooter guy. This has been a pretty fun <laughs> meme going around. Uh, the guy, like, losing the pole vault because his dick's too damn big. Because <laughs> the French <laughs> pole vaulter. I saw that. I'm like, 
Like, you failed spectacularly in the best way possible. All I know is I didn't think badminton could look badass. I was at work the other night, and fucking these, it was China versus Korea, go figure, badminton. <laughs> and fucking. Of course, they're the ones best at badminton. Dude, China, the, the Chinese, do not fuck with the Chinese at badminton. <laughs> they were fucking destroying Korea. And that God. was for the gold medal, and they just fucking ran through their ass. Yeah, like, China's good at, like, is that in ping pong? For some reason, those, like, their two sports are, like, fucking dope at and america sucks at shooting shit well okay apparently like we suck at stationary shooting but if it's a moving target skeet shooting we do we got the gold net oh do we we got a golden skeet shooting with shotguns <laughs> we got like triple platinum in school shooting <laughs> yeah like that was the running joke like hey if this uh if this if the americans would have won if the, the setup was in a school and i know we're getting away from the gojira thing a little bit but like there's another like <sighs> All right, so that our age in the in the first place is absurd, but like, I think we as artists and progressive people also got to realize that sometimes outrage is the best thing that can happen for us. Oh yeah, and I think we lose sight of that a lot of times. If you look retrospectively throughout history, anytime art is massively criticized, and I'm talking about the entire ceremony because it, it it covered a lot of bases. Oh yeah. It was a, you know, like I said, the people... Is that the Last Supper? T- yeah, and just coming off way fucking crazy. But it's just like those misinterpretations and those uh, that conversation happening, even though it's rooted in a lot of negativity, uh, I think us as artists should also relish in the fact that the conversation's happening around art. And art that, you know, fuck, it's relevant, you know? It's... I can't. I can't believe that my favorite band since high school that I saw open up for Lamb of God and Machine Head play twenty five minutes is now big enough to play the highest rated French television program in history, and literally their fucking Spotify goes up fifty percent with not even a new release. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. They don't have any music, but like it literally had a fifty percent jump after I saw a Loudwire article that actually stated what it was and what it became yeah like i was like actually just even before that article i was checking the numbers myself because i was like how let, let's see how much this like buzz is like helping gojira's numbers <clears throat> and like it's about i think the highest i've seen gojira's numbers before was like during when fortitude first came out i think it was around a little over two million at the time and they got pretty close to three didn't they uh, most likely they probably got close i to think three. it was like 2.9 or something when i was looking at it but i'm I might be wrong. Yeah, I know. Like, uh, I think they said it was 2.8 million recently with the Olympic buzz and all that around. It was 1.8 before and jumped up to, or it was like 1.7, 1.8 and jumped up to 2.8. Yeah. Which is, for any metal band, is fucking huge numbers. Well, when you're that level of band and it's a 50, almost, no, damn near a 50% increase of fucking listenership, that's insane. Yeah, that is huge. Especially for a band like Ojira that is that heavy. And like, I mean, a given they're accessible by general metal standards, but by mainstream standards, they're pretty friggin' heavy. They were blast beaten. There was, I mean, they're still, screaming. they're still by mainstream standards a death metal band. <laughs> yeah, like, but they're, like they're, you know, yeah, they're not. But no, like we played Nashville last week, and somebody thought we were a death metal band. Which is, I mean, we we're like one one tenth death metal Cherokee or something <laughs> like we we were just under the amount to be able to go to college for we got I was say, we got maybe like three riffs and my vocals yeah you know. that's about it I, and i started doing a little death growly here and there but we're death metal inspired more so than death metal actually i mean that's why we can talk about the entire genre on a podcast like this because we pretty much try to in my opinion encompass as much of it as possible we try to ape a lot of things <laughs> we try to take a lot of influence. Uh, but with this performance, uh, like fun details about this, uh, Gojira performed the 19th century French anthem, A Cara Ira. Ka- Wait, fuck. A Ka- I- This is hard to say. You're welcome. A Ka- Thank you, whatever, because I wasn't going to be able to say any of that. Yeah, like it's A Ka- Ka-ara. It's uh, Come in Ra, yeah. <laughs> A Ka-ara, or Ira. I'm just ruining this. But it, this, that song... Uh, which is a uh, a rendition, a metal rendition of it, which is an old like French Revolutionary era song, uh, which is basically uh, just it's essentially the way. Th- there's been a couple iterations of the song. It was originally just a patriotic French song, and then around the time of the French Revolution, and turned into fuck these aristocrats are gonna cut their heads off. It, it specifically talks about hanging aristocrats, is what the song's about. Yeah, which is pretty history. fucking metal. Goddamn history. <laughs> Goddamn history. Well, that's. That's the thing that's baffling me this entire time, and I think part of it might be rooted in just, like, how Americans feel about the French anyways. Yeah. 
because we have all, for <laughs> for as long as I can remember before I even remotely understood it. And I can't say I overly understand it, like whatever. But people make fun jokes about French, <laughs> the French, all the time. I mean, that's really all of Europe makes jokes about, especially yeah. England. Like we'll make jokes about the French because they had their whole rivalry yeah, for yeah, years, yeah. for centuries, actually. But yeah, no, it's a. Uh, <laughs> Like I said, that's what kills me about about those ceremonies. It was it was representations of actual fucking mythology and history and this that, and the other, and people just took it the wrong uh, way, a thousand different directions. So wrong. Like I said, that's baffling. I know I was trying to p- spin it the positive way, but like, <laughs> like a is how, how gives that much of a fuck to be that mad about it? Uh, apparently, the, somebody will always find something to be mad about. Uh, especially like it's hard to be mad about, especially a band like Gojira. Like, who's the most positive metal band? When I saw around? like a headline, I was like, Joe DePlantier fucking responds to Andrew Tate. I was like, what? <laughs> I'd say if you're pissing like, off Andrew Tate, you're doing something right. Where, where, where is my favorite band gone? What the hell? They're getting re- <laughs> shit talked by Andrew Tate. <laughs> uh, so like this satanic stuff, just <laughs> shit you would not have thought of. You know, especially in a genre that doesn't have that many bands really break through to a level that could do something like that and the fact that it was them you know it, it's it's just yeah it's immensely cool i'm glad that they fucking got the mainstream you know recognition and at least attention it's definitely some mainstream attention because this was the most watched olympics opening ceremony in history with 28.6 million viewers live not and that doesn't count all the people that streamed it afterwards get them in the super bowl dude super bowl which by the way personal interest titans first preseason game this saturday it's here motherfuckers (laughs) tighten up (laughs) by god oh yeah football season is upon us that means anybody that knows the dave here is going to be subjected to shouts of tighten up well or me crying in my beer every sunday but you know one or the other one of those is going to happen uh i have hope again (laughs) it happens every year every year it's possible around july i'm just like man we are gonna be good this year (laughs) and then the disappointment happens then i shit my pants uh, I know there's at least t-shirt and pants stories with involving football specifically. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, also with this uh, performance, like I said, 28.6 million viewers, they performed with the uh, opera singer Marina Vati, uh, who passed by the the castle that they were performing on. Uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the thing, first off, go watch it because it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's a, This it's is like a, some Metalocalypse type shit. It's a sight to behold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good your reference. Yes. Fun they uh, played uh, on platforms outside of Paris's Conciergerie Palace, um, which looks just looks like a fucking castle. And like it has like a moat and shit that goes around the front of it. And the opera singer, Marie Navati, passed by uh, on a ship uh, with uh, while singing like parts of the Aka Ira song, as well as uh, bits of uh, the old uh, opera song, Carmen. Uh, little bits of that, and there were some other songs I think she did too while pat like little bits and pieces while passing by on the ship, and uh, there was also like synced pyro with the Gojira's performance, and it was like blood red streamers signifying the blood of chopping off the heads of aristocrats. There was a whole little intro uh, with the Marie Antoinette headless woman, like saying like whatever lines in French at the start of that. Well, you said something about fire, and I was gonna be like, yes, fire is everything. Gojira reference number two. <laughs> Sorry. But- so now, it's, stuff. it's very late and it almost has <laughs> lost its luster. <laughs> but womp. I put it in there anyways, goddammit. Womp womp. Uh, but this is a really cool moment for uh, metal because this is definitely the most mainstream moment in a while that metal's had. And it's just pretty interesting to see. And if, of all the bands for it to happen to, it's Gojira's a good one because, like, obviously, because they're. Olympic Games were in France, like France's biggest metal band, like being the part of the opening ceremony is pretty cool for one. And also, Gojira's how opinionated and hateful that metalheads are with any band that goes by. Gojira is one of the few short list of bands I say has the least amount of haters amongst the metal world. Well, and as far as like re- recognition on the grander stage and scale, like they're they're a good band. Like if you're gonna like take a metal band to meet your 
parents. <laughs> this but, is the the metal band you can take home to mama. Go Jira, go Jira. Like you know, yeah, it's scary. You know, when you're listening to it, but like you get into the heart of it, and they they be like, oh my god, like oh those the plants here, boys are so nice. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Like I said, baffling to me for a band I've listened to for as long as I have to be a part one the the uh, the biggest sporting event in the world and um all the shit that's come with it and good and bad it's like i'm just fuck my favorite band's in the center of all the best and the worst of the uh <laughs> of the news right now so it's really interesting like that gojira is just uh and this is like the biggest thing to happen in metal for a good while. Like, uh, there's been articles all over the damn place just talking about it nonstop. Like the responses to it, like the details of the performance and all the background shit. Uh, apparently, they couldn't even tell their own like management and team that they were working on it beforehand. Uh, apparently, the uh, opening ceremony director just kind of told them what the song was, gave them a tempo, and said, "Just do your thing." Essentially, with as far as writing the rendition, and of it. it was very Gojira. It's definitely a Gojira song. They were not was, neutered at all. That's another thing I was half expecting. I was like, well, they just might be there and doing something. And then it came out, and I heard the pinch harmonics that, you know, that are you know, as Gojira. It's full-ass Gojira. As Gojira as Gojira gets. And then I, you know you hear all the other stuff, and it's like, God damn. This is, like I said, uh, it's something I would, would have never imagined. And when I first saw like the news break that it was going to happen, I was like, What? Like who's what, is this the you know hard times or onion like they're like oh the French it's a French you know whatever but no it was it was legit it's legit go cheers doing open ceremony and kick fucking ass at it doing the pulling the full death clock but minus the fan deaths now get a new album out asap and capitalize yes that, it is time we we need at least a new single we need that at least become become the biggest band in the world do it you got that chance do it. Kick the door down. Uh, yes. Metal getting its cool mainstream moment, uh, which is very cool. Bit much love to Gojira. Smack him in the face with the whale, my guy. <laughs> Good old whales. Uh, speaking of side thing with whales, uh, I think Joe DePlanet took advantage of some of the uh, newfound fame to uh, try yeah, to help. Yeah, the <coughs> Sea Shepherd stuff. Okay, yeah. The guy that's... Because they were going to do that EP back in the day that was for Sea Shepherd. And I, I think the organization names have changed since then or whatever, but... Mm. Yeah, they're trying to free that guy from prison. I hope. I just, you know, with foreign politics and how that shit goes, I hope he doesn't get too caught up in some shit. I, you know, I don't know. Oh, like, it's like, just like, all right, Joe. Like, that's trying to stop some whaling in Japan. Don't so. don't get arrested trying to get other people unarrested. Sure. You know, please don't. We need you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. That's like the biggest general news story that we have. But we have some tour news that has happened. Well, two specifically two big tours. There's a lot of tours that have gone on. Uh, but there's two main ones I want to talk about. For one, there's uh, the <clears throat> the new King Diamond U.S. tour uh, called the St. Lucifer's Hospital Tour. Uh, which I don't not I should have looked in more into this. I don't know if that's a song or if that's an upcoming I'm album. I'm assuming it's probably going to be the motif of the stage show. It is the motif of the stage show for sure. I don't know what beyond <clears throat> that. I would assume that maybe something new's coming, but yeah. So there was like one single that was set that was coming out for an upcoming album, but that was like six months ago or something like that. Okay. Uh, and this is the first time that King Diamond has been is touring in America in five years. Uh, Ever which, since we. We had the miss. Played the same night. <laughs> yeah, we played the same night in a different city. We wanted to go see King Diamond last time he came to America, and we had our own show uh, the same night, and was very sad. Uh, we don't have this show like the night this time when he's coming through, though. Uh, on this tour with him is Overkill and Night Demon. Uh, some classic. You ever, you ever listen to Night Demon much? I've heard listen to like a song or two. Maybe? I saw them with somebody. I know that's very informative. <laughs> I do know that I think it might have actually been on like Metal Forge podcast that there was advertising for a whole Night Demon podcast. Mm -hmm. Apparently, uh, some Night Demon super fan <laughs> is heading that up. Yeah, no, they're uh, <clears throat> they're really good. They're, I mean, they're just a throwback, you know, kind of a more throwback classic metal traditional. Type, yeah. yeah, I think they're I think they're a three piece. Uh, but yeah, no. On top of you know, obviously one of my favorite bands, Overkill, and. Uh, which you know the uh, the king. We'll see who's drumming for him because that, that's big news that came out. Yeah, uh, Jason that was the thing. Uh, Overkill, who's opening for King Diamond, and this uh, had news that just came out today as we record this uh, that drummer Jason Bittner 
uh, is like leaving the band to focus on his uh, other bands, uh, which would be Shadows Fall because they're say the Shadows Fall come back, come back, yeah, the Shadows Fall come back. One. They're already doing like comeback shows this year, and they're work in the midst of working on a new album that most likely will come out next year, which is good news too. It's like very that, good news. That's one of those bands that needed to, to like this band kind of when they did and i think that this comeback is at a good time that's gonna be good like i've talked about it on the tiktok and stuff a little bit before and actually on youtube where i was on my anticipated albums for the year which i'm guessing it's the album's not coming out this year it's gonna come out next year uh but uh that they're working with uh zeus harris producer zeus harris on this record who produced all their albums except the last one uh that they did before the hiatus uh so this will be that's will be real good. That's real exciting news. And uh, also, Jason Bender is focusing on his other new supergroup band that he's in called Category Seven, which uh, features members from a number of different bands. But uh, the one, one I noticed the member the most is uh, John Bush from Armored Saint and former Anthrax uh, fame is the singer for that group. That'd be fun then. Which I, they have a record out already. I just haven't gotten around to listening to it okay, yet. Okay. Uh, yeah, but, I didn't. I didn't recognize that name when I read the article earlier about him leaving, but. So yeah, now let's see who's drumming for Overkill. I'm assuming that it'll be a monster of some sorts because they're just one of those bands that's big enough to get pretty much whoever they want. Uh, Shadow Falls do for like the comeback. I thought when Jason Bender joined him in the first place, I was like, holy shit, because Bender's yeah. a fucking killer drummer, and those last few records were just you know incredible on that front. Uh, and then, like I said, man, the King. I'm glad he's still fucking out and doing it, and I it's been on my bucket list for fucking ever. It's uh, it's in my plans. It's in the plans, I want to go to the. St. Lucifer's Hospital. St. Lucifer's Hospital. Well, I might get my prostate check then, too. Just kill, <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. Which, speaking of which, that tour begins on October 15th in San Antonio <laughs> and ends on December 6th in Dallas. And the near, if you're local to here, where we're at here in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, the nearby dates for here are Friday, October 18th in Cincinnati and Wednesday, October 23rd in Louisville. And I'm just saying, the the demographic of fans for King Diamond, y'all might be want to get your assholes checked. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might want to get a prostate yeah, check. <laughs> like uh, if you were back in the day, King Diamond fan, you want to sing like King Diamond, go get their prostate check. <laughs> oh, sweet Melissa. <laughs> your fingers are a little cold, Doc. <laughs> uh, but also more news with that King Diamond tour, <laughs> which I haven't even like mentioned. The, like the real interesting, another interesting part: uh, solo black metal artist and his fellow Dane uh, Mercure is going to be providing backing vocals and organ performance for King Diamond on this one. Uh, I don't know how if you're familiar with Mercure at all. Uh, it seems like a little bit out of my M Y R K U R. Yeah. No, I don't fucking. I mean, I, I, I've I've seen the name. Uh, well, like, Mjurker has uh, been one of the most uh, notable experimental black metal acts of, like, the past uh, decade or so. I was going to say, let me poo-poo on one thing, I guess, now. Is <laughs> black metal is not generally my favorite. Well, the thing is, though, with her, it's like, a uh, cheese. Oh, it's a she? Yeah, it's a woman. Okay. It's Mjurker is the woman. <laughs> okay. It's a, a project. Uh, and the thing with it, like, she started off, like, she's had an interesting career. She started off as, like, a Swedish, like, pop, dance pop, indie pop artist. Uh, then transitioned into doing black metal. I got a bunch of hate from the black metal chuds because black metal chuds, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, but she, the record she's put out, she's put out, I think, three or four so far. Uh, all of them received critical acclaim. I remember her, uh, whatever breakthrough record of hers that came out, I was a big fan of. That's what was around the time I was first really getting into black metal. Yeah. And, of course, the black metal I got into was all the experimental stuff that's not, quote, unquote, true black metal. Speaking of, uh, and just because we haven't done a podcast in a while, mm. and this came out last month, and I know it's one of your favorite uh, contemporary bands, that New Zealand Ardor uh, EP. Yes. Fucking phenomenal. Fucking, I've, yes. I've, I've always liked like kind of what they did, but I think the production and everything just kind of came together on that EP. Like, I don't know. For whatever reason, it grabbed me a lot harder, because I, I even went back and tried to listen to like the Zealand Ardor album. Uh, after that, and I was like, "Yeah, it's not quite hitting it for me as good." But yeah, for something that's only like thirteen minutes long, I was like, "Damn!" I, so they're supposed to have a full album come out, I think. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Like I said, I I just wanted to make note of that. That's something new that I actually uh, like. That's saw. also under the experimental black metal yeah. category. Which last two black and anything is better than just <laughs> just well, straight black. black I was uh, yeah, let's <laughs> we're talking about metal here. Uh, <laughs> 
Well, Zilla and Art are like, their last two records are my favorite of each year that came out, Strange Fruit and the self-titled. Uh, and also their first record that came out uh, was my th- number three or two or three record of that year. So they've been one of my favorite bands easily of the past few years since they came out. Uh, and Mira I've liked as well. She released an album last year, which was uh, pretty, pretty good. Uh, I didn't give it enough listens to really give a good critique of it, but it's just interesting to have her working with King Diamond of all people. Uh, that's like a big, huge thing for her um, to like get that type of recognition, given she's not performing her own solo material. And on he it. ain't fucking but, around with no slouches. So. Oh yeah, Mirakur is definitely no slouch. Uh, yeah, but that's just really cool. You get a that's a nice variety. Of yeah, that there. lineup's fucking insane. Because like I said, uh, Night Demon is. Like I said, they're classic, but they're not in the vein of either one, really. I mean, closer to, I would say, King Diamond, but not, like I said, not not anywhere close uh, on that front. But, yeah, no. Like, if I can see them for the first, King Diamond for the first time with Overkill, I, I will be a happy boy. <laughs> I'd want to see King Diamond, too, because, like, I, more in recent the past, like, few years, got more into King Diamond. When I first heard King Diamond, I was like, what the fuck's up with the vocals and then like most bands that are well <clears throat> most bands that are well recognized with weird vocals i eventually start loving them i uh always was into the novelty of it like back in the day and i was i ain't gonna lie i've listened a lot more of, like the merciful fate part of it than, than the king Diamond i mean that's really it. like what i what got me into it but, i was like the merciful fate records like i just did full album listens i was like this fucking they're a little, little more straightforward yeah uh but like yeah, no. It's like I said, man, he's the king. And I those get, album artwork covers are fucking amazing. I got I got to see that dude. Uh, another big tour that's also ha- was announced this past week. Uh, High on Fire uh, is like doing a North American tour, doing twenty three dates in support of their twenty fifth anniversary as a band. Is it just Weed Eater on the fucking little show? Uh. It might be that tour was formatted weird. Yeah, it is formatted. There's three different bands like that are well. The way I remember it was Exhumed is with them on all dates. They are. I think Exhumed is with them because that makes this show like. I mean, I love High on Fire. They they've kind of been meh for me live. Like sometimes, like that depends on the venue. Like I've seen, I saw them at Bogarts with Anthrax and uh, it was fuck. It was Anthrax, Exodus, Municipal Waste, and. Four arm, <laughs> four four arm. It's literally like the number four arm. Yeah, I feel like I've seen that logo somewhere. Yeah, well, that's whatever. Weird, they were weird, okay, man. but like High on Fire was in the dead middle of this day, and like it was just like the sound guy was like, "Oh shit," and it was just <laughs> kind of feedbacky and shitty. But Ooh. I saw him way back when open up for Megadeth in Flames, Children of Bodom and Child for a Cowboy. That's a that's a lab- that's a lineup that fucks. Yeah, they don't. They need to. They need to give back to tours like that. Like, yeah, that's they just like stack like five <clears throat> true bangers. That that is just fire on top um, of fire. But that was incredible. That's kind of where I really really got into them. And then like I seen them with our buddies uh, Ohm in Louisville, and that was a great show. But like oh, I said, yeah, it's like every, the half the times I've seen them just been kind of like meh. But like exhumed, fuck. Because that's the same guy that does Gruesome, which is like that death Oh, tribute. that's I didn't know the same yeah, guy. Yeah, they, uh, Trevor or something, I think, is his name. Exhumed put out a uh, record early early this year, uh, a new one, which is pretty pretty darn solid. Dude, they're you fucking remember. phenomenal live. So if it's them, Weed Eater, and High on Fire, I'd definitely... I, I just thought I read it kind of fucked up. It is. Let's, I'm not 100% did. sure if I read it right, because like depending on the date, there's different bands on different dates. Uh, over the whole tour, there's uh, the bands that will be with them are Negative Approach, Weed Eater, and Exhumed. And that's just different by the date. Uh, but they'll be doing these dates in support of their new album, Cometh the Storm, which came out earlier this year, which is great a banger. One of my favorite ones of the year, for sure. Uh, as well as their 25th anniversary as a band. You know, speaking of a Weed Eater, I was uh, hanging out with old Dixie Dave. Oh, Dixie Dave. If you uh, see the... Uh, I'm pretty sure I put that on a Storm Tucker Instagram of uh, our... Of, Toker Dave and Dixie Dave, yeah. like have a, a nice little powwow outside of the their two show here. Best days in the history of Stoner. <laughs> I gotta suck my own ass every now and again. Bold claim, but we'll we'll roll with it. <clears throat> Goddamn, like I haven't done podcasts in nearly a year, and I fucking can't keep a throat clear. Yeah. <clears throat> 
But you sing, <clears throat> you sing live, Dante. This ain't this ain't hard, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's weird. Like I can. Well, the thing is, I'm just like shouting full force live. This is like just talking and having to be understood and shit. I know you're like. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me articulate. I do, I do I voice work too, like voiceover shit too. I should be used to this, like pr- I would think by now. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know why, because it's only been stuck in my head for a week. But it's like when you get you a voice box, like, oh, like Kane. <laughs> I was like, suck on my chocolate, <laughs> suck on my chocolate zombie balls. All right, uh, so you've you been on a shout out that. to the Deadlock Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're one of my favorite uh, wrestling podcasts. I'm so surprised you haven't started your own wrestling podcast. Suck on my chocolate salty balls. <laughs> it's been stuck in my head. Rent uh, free. That has been a, that was a pretty funny pod. Um, <laughs> for a hot minute, I I need to start a, like I need to start like eight different pods. Yeah, you got like you could make a podcast on. You can make a whole Godzilla podcast. You can make a whole wrestling podcast. You can make a football podcast. You can make a podcast on just the Titans alone and have him be a Titans focused podcast. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about fucking Buddhism before long, dude. Shut um. up. So, so many topics. I, <laughs> I'm i not well versed enough in enough things to podcast about much else besides this. I can maybe do an anime podcast, and that's about it. Nerd. <laughs> oh, you want to call me a nerd, Mr. Godzilla Brand? Hey, Wrestling yeah. man. <laughs> I- <laughs> And I mean, also, metalheads are all nerds anyway. I don't, too, I don't know. <laughs> say, sports fans are fucking nerds. They're, they're, they're nerds. actually bigger nerds than most because it involves math. And <laughs> like this is, I just watch anytime I see Sports Center. There's some weird ass statistic that's pulled from the ass into nowhere. It's like last time this friggin' like NBA player scratched like every time he scratches ass this many times. No, it's, <laughs> it's actually a fucking problem because they will frame anything. Anyway, anyhow, and it's just like they'll make anything sound like extravagant, and it's like no, that's just you just threw a bunch of fucking <laughs> you threw five improbable things together, and then fucking made it into like an impressive stat. It's just like okay, it might be an anomaly, but who gives a fuck? You it's, know, it's so weird. Like I don't like some of the statistics I see. I'm like, who's keeping track of this specific thing happening? Well, everything now <laughs> is you know fucking one type. I, there, there's actually a sports website I've looked up a couple times where like, you can put like time frames in or like, like I remember like being curious about some Derrick Henry shit, you know, <laughs> which you know that's a sore subject. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, he did leave the Titans, didn't yeah, he? Yep. But yeah, you could like literally look up how many rushing yards specifically he had against the division in his career, and yeah, that's you, one of the less weird stats. I've well, I know, but like even then, that's like a. a quarter of a it's like a stat of a stat of a stat still that's definitely down and what espn stats. does is fucking like times 10 <laughs> uh oh yeah we were talking about a high on fire tour Sports. <laughs> <know this>. uh <laughs> last one the, <clears throat> the high on fire tour uh it's 23 dates and it begins right here in kentucky august 31st uh in louisville kentucky and mercury ballroom god uh, i hate that yeah, I, I do hate that venue, honestly. Like, that's it's a cool vibe, but it's a Live Nation venue. Fuck Live Nation. Fucking tickets too expensive. The drinks too expensive. Blah. Fuck most ticketing websites. Yeah, but uh, and it'll be end on November second in Mexico City. Arriba. Uh, I don't know if any of my Mexican listeners are listening to this, but if you are, you should go see Hot and Fire. You're oh, probably yeah. already going to see Hot and Fire because you're a metalhead in Mexico. You're already fucking going. We got a thousand and ten fucking dudes in Mexico. I'm sure. Yeah, it's so so many, uh, but that's all the tour news for right now. There's so. like a pirate somewhere in the fucking Gulf that's just like, <laughs> oh, we got the signal, we got the heavy haystack podcast. We got the heavy haystack podcast. They're listening to this like ahoy pirates. All right, let's <laughs> fucking torture these prisoners with their voices. <laughs> uh, like, hope they're keeping the the, <laughs> the people entertained on the ship or whatever they're at in the Caribbean. All my yo ho hoes. <laughs> but you <laughs> my yo ho hoes, Jesus Christ. Ah, we're funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I just be saying shit. Uh, well that's all the general news you have, so but there's also a lot of new singles that came out this week. Uh from a lot of notable bands. Like usually this period of the year tends to be a kind of a light period because it's like after the summer 
Like it's the summer people already like had the releases earlier and the tour and on those. Uh, the fall stuff are just now starting to get announced. And this is about the time here near in August is when everyone's all the bigger bands are gearing up for the big releases. Uh, and this past week, one of the biggest releases that we've had, uh, that's a, a comeback of sorts is, uh, the new Opeth, uh, song, which I'm not sure how, what that symbol is. I've been calling it S1, but that's not an S. It looks like a curly snake looking symbol or some shit. It's the devil. It's Satan. He's back again. <laughs> I, I, I tried Googling it, too. I couldn't find anything on Reddit or anywhere that says, how do you do pronounce the new Opeth single? Yeah. And no one had anything, no way to say it. So, like, I, for real, in, like, the last, like, two or three months, like, was checking to see if Opeth was, like, still doing anything. Because I hadn't heard anything in so goddamn long. I think, what, the last album was 18? It's pre-pandemic, so, yeah, I think so. And, uh... Yeah, no, nah, and I'd seen them multiple times. I mean, they've just been a band that's been around my, my radar for fucking ever. And I just, like I said, I hadn't heard a goddamn thing. So, funny enough, I had, like, oops, uh, knocking shit over. But yeah. <laughs> I, I had uh, looked up, and they had just announced the North American tour, mm. um, like, when I looked them up. And I was like, all right, cool. At least they're not, like, they're de- defunct. Too like I said, I just for whatever reason had not heard anything. And then this song came out and I was like, Holy hell. <laughs> he did the growl. He did the roar. It's like he <laughs> he did everyone asked him to do the roar and he did the roar. I'm uh well and I was a big fan of all the uh you know progressive Probably fucking like chili did chili, yeah. Chill stuff. Chill. You know. <laughs> you know, like the the the, the melodic approach of opeth is still way better than most bands are capable of so i didn't always quite get the hate that they kind of got from their fan base because they weren't heavy anymore so we like i know i did see like a few people complaining about the direction from the fan base but there was for a, such a swift a strong like uh same change in sound there was a lot of positivity in the fan base about those records too well yeah but it's kind of like the uh which we've discussed on this show before, the the In Flames conundrum, like where mm. they've always had a big fan base, but uh, the original fan base was kind of like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, why um, are you doing this? And then, hell, that might just be people more directly tied to, but no, I, I've definitely heard a lot of complaints over the years of them completely changing that, like, formula. Because, I mean, that was the beauty of the formula, that it was all-encompassing. It was the, the heaviest of heavy with the fucking most progressive pretty fucking shit that you can put together oh, yeah. so like when they shifted completely to the one side of that and i get it i mean when when a band is that versatile it, it you know granted they're still writing these crazy fucking parts and then they're 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 insanely talented but like you know if you're in the the, the heavier side of the world and a band quits doing that but the beauty of seeing them live is they never did let's be solely chill live either yeah, they are definitely like, uh, they have a lot of versatility to the sound where they can like, get away with being like a fully melodic act, like better than most acts would be. So, but for a guy that didn't hate any of the older stuff, <laughs> you know, or, or the newer older stuff, you know, because like I said, they haven't been around for a minute. But like, being me, I still fucking like kind of got giddy when i heard the growl i was like oh, oh yeah like i've heard like i basically like, i already knew that they were gonna do growls because i just looking at the album cover and the single cover i was like all right the vibe says this needs growls and what's funny too though is and it's very distinct with opeth because i remember when i discovered opeth it was on the headbangers ball 2 uh compilation or no it might whatever the revenge compilation i don't know if that was the second one or not but uh it was the radio edit of the Grand Conjuration. So this song is probably like 12 minutes long, and it's condensed down to like a four and a half minute single, five minute single. Yeah, this is the radio edit as yeah. it's described. Yeah, so you, you didn't even really get to hear the song probably. <laughs> just uh, there's knowing, a lot more. This is just lot knowing more. how Opeth is. So, uh, <clears throat> But what I heard, um, I will say that like my last listen through of it, I was like kind of brought down to earth a little bit just because I did it's a little wonky, but again, it being a radio edit, there's probably there's a lot more expansiveness that probably like there's more of a story. To yeah, the song. Opeth, Opeth, Opeth's definitely one that I mean, like I said, I'm pretty sure they condensed down for business reasons on that shit. But, oh yeah, 
but I definitely always have preferred when I heard their full versions. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Uh, it's very like, uh, yeah, but like you're a lot more familiar with Opeth's material and especially the classic material than I am. Like I'm. Ghost Reverie is one of the best albums ever, dude. Oh yeah, I that's what I've been album. long meaning to do the Opeth deep dive. Uh, I listened to the two proggy records because uh, that was during the time when I started doing album reviews and such. It was uh, Sorceress and Sorceress and uh, I forgot the name of the last one uh, that came out. Because like the the first album that kind of put them down this path was a uh, Heritage. And that was like 2012, I want to say. Something like that. God uh, is dead. So <laughs> Lifting them up right now. And yeah, we don't have a Jamie. Yeah, like I, I got to do all this myself. Give oh, yeah, it a la- goog, J-Mo. <laughs> the last album was in 2019 uh, called Incata Venetum. Or Venetum. I think that's how you say it. Incata Venetum. Yeah, run through the rest of them. Where, like, they did, like, the album, they did two versions, one in English and one in Swedish. I forgot about that detail. Okay. Well, let's see. Uh, and that was 2018? Uh, that was 2019. Okay. So. Oh, actually, no, okay, it was originally 2018. They did the Swedish version in 2019. Okay. That's what it was. And then uh, Sorceress? Before? Sorceress was 2016. And then... For that Pale Communion in okay, 2014. that was the one I couldn't remember. And then the Heritage was what? 2011. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty much the trajectory because I think Porcelain Heart is that the one before something like that. Uh, that must have been a single because. Uh, well, yeah, it might be a song. I'm terrible with this shit now. Yeah, I don't know which one that was on. But, uh, but long story short, like they've pretty much did a decade and a half of not screaming, so it's a very welcome change. Yes, it's uh, it's time to bring back the growls. Yeah. Do the growls. And it's a return to form. Like I said, I, I, I think the I think the single version uh is not gonna be what that song actually is, and that's what I'm looking forward to now, is hearing that song in its full glory. And the proper album version. Because it's like, yeah, they th- it, it's just structured weird for, for a single. Like Yeah, it's especially for a prog band, like I'm it's I'm glad it sounds as coherent as it does. Yeah. Uh, being a cut down version of the original vision. Uh but it is like a really good song. I do like the. It's, I mean, it's it's got it's me a, excited. It's a prog metal song, but it is. It's still got more of like the rock vibe. It's like yeah, it has the heavy growls to it, but it's more so like gothy than anything else. Well, I mean, they were gonna do the. They evolved past what they were before when they were doing the death, you know, growls. So yeah, it, it's gonna be a combination of all that. Like I said, I'm looking forward to it. it it's like I said, I, I think it, the 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 gimmick of switching over and not having the death growls was getting a little tiresome for me. I, uh, like, and, it's be curious to see what type of balance they have on the record of like the growly stuff versus like fully melodic stuff. I, I, I'd say it'd be probably fucking pretty solid. I, I would hate for it to be like that one song. And it was like, <laughs> it's like, here, here's your growls. And now you get nothing. Shut else. the fuck up. Nothing. Uh, but we'll, they kind of have a sense of humor. They might, <laughs> they, they, they might, <laughs> Uh, but we'll get to hear the full version of that song and the full album of that is titled The Last Will and Testament out October 11th. So not too long of a wait. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. It'll be a good one. Uh, next up, and uh, have a one of the most notable supergroups. That's a whole lot of them been popping up recently in recent years. Uh, the supergroup Better Lovers, uh, which is made up of members, former members of Dillinger Escape Plan, Every Time I Die, and Fit for an Autopsy. Uh, with their uh, new single titled A White Horse Covered in Blood, uh, which is the first single from their upcoming album Highly Irresponsible that's coming October 25th. Uh, the band's like released like a few, of course they had their uh, like God Made Me an Animal EP last year uh, that was released to a whole lot of critical acclaim, especially with the uh, lead single uh, from that one, which title I forget. Uh, but th- they came out swinging. Essentially, like it, it was everyone like was wondering like what when they first announced it, they were wondering like what this band's going to sound like for one. Uh, and it's really it's the, the guitar, but it has the guitarist, drummer and bassist from every time I die. So overall, sound wise, yeah, Better Lovers has like a lot of that sound. That vibe, to yeah, that like a beat. It's basically that really like techie hardcore, but with like a strong punk edge, a little bit of Southern rock yeah, flavor. Like hype. Yeah, like. I actually enjoyed the fuck out of that song. Uh, 
it wasn't gonna. It wasn't my favorite thing in the world with Body Stretch Imagination, and I might just be rose colored glasses because all the other singles that came out and uh, Thirty Under Thirteen. That was that first single that came out the but Bears last year. They, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I've gotten a little more on the the core front as I've gotten older, which is weird. You yeah, know, like who knew David be, A. Julangley, a you're core supposed, fan? You're supposed to be into that shit when you're a kid. You fucking <laughs> love that shit your entire life. But I guess I, guess I just. As I get older, it's just the the the, the fashion part of it kind of went out the window, and it's more just here's stupid, dumb, fun music, <laughs> you know. But like, so they have a lot more going on than your typical core band too, for sure. As you were saying, oh, they do. Like, and, I mean, uh, if these are people from like some of the most critically acclaimed like bands of like the past twenty years, yeah. Because like, of course, you have Greg Pucciat on vocals from Dillinger Escape Plan, who's considered. What besides them being considered one of the best bands of the past twenty years, they're also like Greg Puchato himself is considered one of the most unique vocalists of like the past twenty years as well. I say like, this is like one of the first times you sent me the list, and I'd listened to like three quarters of the singles already, and this was I wasn't necessarily like looking forward to listening <laughs> to this one. Yeah, but no, nah, it's pretty fucking hype, man. It did, like I said, it, it it was a fun, fun little song. Oh yeah, it has like the song itself is like pretty high energy. Like I've liked pretty much everything they've put out so far. Uh, they did release a single, uh, like a little, a while back, uh, earlier this year called The Flowering, uh, which I was just kind of like okay on. Like, at that one, like, it was kind of like their, they had their Sabbath sound, which is kind of like the, like, every time I die is stuff with Greg Pucciato vocals. But they are starting, I feel like with this single, they're starting to kind of make their own sound. Because you can tell just from, like, the album cover, which I don't know if you really noticed that with the whole exploding fucking party. Shit, I don't even think I I looked at at the album cover, but that's pretty cool. The whole vibe with, like, in the music video I just watched, like, before David got over here, uh, they're definitely going for a fun vibe with a lot of their stuff. Like, the music video was super colorful. It has a strong punk-leaning energy. Yeah. uh, Super hype. It has, like, really catchy refrains and choruses, like, to this one. Yeah. and maybe as I've gotten older, I just embrace fun. Yes, <laughs> it's okay to have fun sometimes. Uh, and like it's it's really like, art is pain, Dante. <laughs> Existence uh, is misery. Yeah, like sometimes you can be like loud, aggressive music, but also have like some smiles and chuckles with it. Uh, interesting. Of this one is like, uh, but this upcoming album they released like a few standalone singles before this that weren't on the God Made Me an Animal EP from last year. And you'd assume that with those singles, they'd roll them into this upcoming album, but this whole al- new album is all new songs. Uh, so besides, this is the first taste of the new album, all the previous singles that we had, like the flowering and uh, some of the other singles that they like put out uh, are not going to be on this one. Those are just standalone singles uh, that they had because they had the two alive amongst the dead song. They had uh, the flowering, they had uh I think I think that was it. Yeah, I guess that was my chocolate salty balls. I, I don't believe that was them. Oh no, <laughs> I think that was old Chef from the classic South Park days. Suck on my chocolate salty balls. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this song was like really fun. I was just like, like I was a bit iffy on, on the last one, the flowering. But I was thinking like, okay, maybe they're starting to lose their luster a bit. But this one, I'm back in the fold. I'm back in the better lovers fold. I'm like, okay, I'm hyped for this album. It's gonna be great. Well, so- and super groups. Always have a uphill battle at first. Oh yeah, because everybody's just going to be like, "Well, it, it, it reminds." There's me. expectations. Yeah, and it, it, you're always going to be thinking about the other shit, uh-huh. and and so it's it, it almost takes like a couple albums if you can make it last. Because that's the other thing with super groups; they typically don't last very long. <laughs> Not very. So like, this but, is like a whole new band. Like all the bands except well, well, fit for an autopsy is still going, but like. Don't just get playing. Greg is out of that band. They're doing reunion tours, but with like the very first album pre Greg lineup. Uh, and every time I die is like dead, dead. Uh, cause you got Jordan Buckley along with the bassist and drummer, uh, doing better lovers now full time. And of course, uh, uh, Keith Buckley, uh, the singer has his own band, many eyes that he's doing now. Uh, and then you have a uh, fit for an autopsy, uh, freaking dude uh the guitarist who's named freaking escapes me i should jimmy crackhorn it's definitely not jimmy crackhorn um <laughs> isaac Hayes. but it's the guitarist slash producer from uh fucking will putney that's his fucking name there you go uh, will putney from fit for an autopsy he was the guitarist and producer and one of the most notable producers of like metal recent metal times he's the guy that brought body count back and made them popular again 
uh, along with like being a producer for many other metalcore, hardcore, and just metal in general bands. Uh, so this new music from Better Lover sounds quality production wise. The riffs are high energy, fire, and fun. Greg Puchato sounds as strong as he ever has. And this is just like a whole lot of hype and energy. That's I'm excited to hear the rest of this album. Might be one of my favorites of this year, potentially. It's definitely on my most anticipated list for sure. Yeah, we'll see. I'll listen to it, maybe. <laughs> You'll listen to it, maybe. I'll make your ass listen to it. Uh, well, here's a band that you're definitely not more familiar with. Arch Enemy. Uh, with their new single uh, titled Dream Stealer. Uh, there's no album announcement attached to this one, but uh, their last music came out on their Deceivers album that came out in 2022. Uh, for me personally, like of course, like with the recent trajectory of Arch Enemy, uh, of course they had the singer switch with Alyssa White Gloose taking over for Angela Gossow uh, back on the War Eternal record back in 2012. Was it that been that long? It's been a long time. Yeah, that's 2012 when War Eternal came out. Uh, and that record was excellent in my eyes, and a lot of other people thought it was excellent. The single uh, "War Eternal" is still their most popular song on Spotify, like so far. Nah. Uh, and then after that, it's been a whole lot of meh after that War Eternal record. Well, and I was an Angela Gossel uh, loyalist. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of Angela Gossel loyalists who have uh, Which, not jumped ship. I don't think they were. I don't re- recall there being like bad terms on that breakup or anything. Oh no, reason. like Angela yeah. Gossel's their manager. So okay, yeah. yeah, she's still their manager. So yeah, and but, she handpicked Alyssa to be their new singer. Yeah, so you know it's all cool and stuff. But like, I still like. I don't know. She was just such a fucking powerful being. Oh yeah. Uh, in my childhood that I was just like, fuck. And then when they replaced her, I was like, okay, whatever. And it was just like one of those things. There's a lot of bands. Actually, that's a lot of what this entire fucking like section of the show is about is like bands I listened to back in the day that I didn't really listen to, but then they all put out singles that I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Cause this single is fucking baller as fuck. Like, this I, was baller. like I actually I, like, it didn't hit me at first. When I first listened to this one, uh, I think it might have just been because I was just expecting more meh from yeah. like Arch Enemy. Because I first started really listening to Arch Enemy on the Will to Power album in 2017, the second Alyssa record. Uh, like I, that was the first taste of it. I liked the singles from it. The Eagle Flies Alone was a banger uh, from that record, along with a few other ones. But if, overall, that record was kind of eh. Uh, I went backwards and listened to War Tunnel. Loved that record. And then her album that came out in 2022, Deceivers, was an improvement. Over will to power. So excuse my ignorance a little bit, but so like the the twinge of melodic vocal that's like in the uh, chorus. Yeah, has that been a pretty much a staple since she's been in the van? Uh, not to that degree. Okay, because uh, that's what I was gonna say is like for a band that I feel like is always like their their melodic uh, qualities were always through the guitar. Yeah, I was actually it was welcome that I was hearing that chorus and I was like. This is like what a band that's been around that long that is integrating that kind of shit should sound like. Which they still had a bit of that even with Gasa because like Nemesis is like a big sing along chorus. Well, um, yeah, but it wasn't. She was still screaming her fucking head off. Oh, yeah. This is this is a little more screaming in the key. Yeah, yeah this right. is this is a little more. Uh, like I said, a little more saying. Yeah, like uh, Aly- Alyssa like is is like a seasoned melodic singer as well, but she does it. I think she, they might have did one song on the last album where she sung fully melodic. Yeah, uh, which I've been waiting for them to like start incorporating that because usually if you have a singer who can sing sing and you do any type of melodic level anything i've just been waiting for them to just do full on yeah melodic if you got the tools you use them you know like it's musically creatively it, Which, it only makes sense she did get to flex that muscle a bit she did like a song it was either last year or the year before where uh nita strauss uh had her solo record that came out and she just had a bunch of guest singers all on it and uh the thing is though like the thing that bugged me about that album i did enjoy that album but she pulled the uh session musician move of like every singer she worked with she just made her version of their band song so like got uh the guy from in flames she basically wrote an in flames song for him uh did like worked with Alyssa. made uh essentially an arch enemy song but with a fully melodic chorus yeah that i like better than a lot of the recent <laughs> arch enemy stuff yeah. funny enough uh but this song though like at first, it took a bit. I think I had to listen to it in better hear headphones and better sound quality. Yeah. But this song bangs. It, it's it's high energy. It's fast. Spotify it's actually did me a service because it was. I listened to the Opeth single. Yep. It popped up with a, a single that we're about to discuss, 
And then it came through and auto played this single. Oh wow! Like back to back to back, and I was like, I guess just playing all the new notable singles. That well, came and out. usually it just doesn't seem to play out like that for me on Spotify. Like just how I use it, I guess I don't know. Mm. But it, it it hit me, and I was like, and so like hearing it in that succession, I was like, fuck, all right, like because it was like the third one of those songs I heard, and I was just like, holy fuck, um, because like there's like a little guitar thing in the beginning that's like straight up it's like fucking classic like slayer but also classic arch enemy like you vibe i mean it's just that jumpy fucking arch enemy is kind of like early slayer but like on steroids a little bit yeah now like i said i i actually highly enjoyed it it actually kind of gave me a little fucking hope to kind of go back and actually give this chick a chance because i just like i said not a band i've ever disliked ever i just <laughs> when they switch vocalists i just kind of checked out yeah but. and this single just kind of happened to come across my radar at a time that i was feeling pretty good about music all of a sudden because like i said these first the uh, opeth did the roar <laughs> opeth did the roar arch enemy shredding again like so i was like yeah. all right fuck yeah let's uh you know so I, I might go back and actually give her her albums a chance but you gotta give war eternal a chance at least because that's her best work like with the band i just i came in on angela gus out and i remember i was at Ozfest, uh and i hadn't heard arch enemy yet and this little tiny blonde chick comes out and just first thing I've ever heard like it. Like, I just hadn't heard a girl scream. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was like bit. back when like back in like her like in the heyday of Angela Gossett was her, was Otep, and Kitty. And that was about it. And that was the Doomsday Machine like tour. So like Nemesis and all that. So I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, it was fucking my apocalypse and all that. Yeah, that, that, that set was crazy. They were definitely a standout uh, of that early Ozfest day. For Actually, there was a lot of standouts that day, but... Yeah, they're, they're really good. Like Mastodon it's on being on Leviathan and such too. Oh, yeah, that's that's a big one for yeah, sure. It was fucking as I lay dying on the like their big one that had like the moon. Oh, whatever. the uh, ocean. That's not an oceans between us. It's a uh, sa- sa- shadows of security. I think it's yeah. one that's called. Yeah, uh, Kill Switch was on the end of heartache. Goddamn! I wish like I got into like going to live shows like earlier during that period because i was like listening to a lot of it but i was like blood vein was on lost and found fucking shadows fall was on uh the war within this whole like, thing reminds me i just need to do like uh why 2004 was a great year for me black label society was on mafia which was <clears throat> probably like the height of them yeah. uh fucking, i think that's still the biggest record rob zombie had just come back from the fucking devil's rejects it was like his first tour post like his first few movies which it wasn't great but oh the good old days uh, the millennial metalhead days <laughs> yeah like that fucking lineup is ridiculous like fucking like bury your dead like kind of fresh bury your fucking dead um yeah no like it, the time frame and like all the albums that came out around that it was just like holy shit <laughs> it's like uh, who's who what's what that was so good but they're, they're like our channel is still trucking along it seems like they're back to getting good good again which is like really a welcome development well, any band that does that stuff long enough it's gonna gonna ebb and yeah. I'm wondering, like, I, don't, I haven't seen, like, the song credits in this one, but I'm wondering if they're letting Jeff Loomis do writing now at all. Uh, you would think you'd uh, utilize that tool. You would think, but they haven't, he doesn't have any, like, songwriting credits was, in a while. I actually forgot that was what was going on. Although, I think he might, is he, I'm not sure if he's still in the band, because I thought I saw something where he might have left. Give it a goog, J-Mo. Give it a goog. We don't have a J-Mo. <laughs> we, we have me and you. That's about it. We're here. We, we don't got J-Mo money. <laughs> Uh, is Je- is fucking I yep. guess Google this is Jeff Loomis still with Arch Enemy? With book. Turns out there's a lot of metal bands and a lot of metal musicians to is keep. Is Jeff checking. Loomis still with Arch Enemy? Yeah, we're doing live googling on the podcast. We're so fucking professional. No, yeah, he left Arch Enemy. Uh, they yeah. announced they split with Jeff Loomis. He joined him in 2014 and left uh, January of this year. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so Jeff Loomis did leave. He was he was being underutilized anyway, <clears throat> but they. But funny enough, Jeff Loomis leaves and he put out their best single in fucking years. So that's kind of it's kind of weird. Like I guess Mike Mata is uh, just having a resurgence now. I suppose. Well, I mean, dude fucks. Dude, dude does 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 fuck. Uh, I feel like you should let Alyssa do a little more writing though, because like let the. English as a first language speaker speaks like writes more of the stuff of your in, in English songs. Yeah, but that's hard to you know 
when it's your baby and your operation. That is true. And uh, it's not like it doesn't work. <clears throat> they're still one of the biggest fucking... I mean, they're out of metal death bands. They're like the biggest one that's not in flames or death clock. Bro. Yeah. So, um, But also in uh, new stuff that bands that haven't released stuff in a good while, uh, we have Ginger. Uh, one of the most hyped bands of the past few years. Uh, known for their brand of proggy, groove metal type stuff. Uh, they released a single called Someone's Daughter. And this is their first new music since their 2021 album, Wallflowers. Uh, they're in the midst of writing a new album. Uh, I remember seeing a few months back that uh, lead singer Tatiana uh, was uh, dealing with writer's block uh, and was having trouble writing lyrics for the new album. Uh, but this is a standalone single that they claim that is their, as every band does, their best work they've done to date. Uh, and for me personally with Ginger, uh, I was huge fan of them on their it wasn't technically not the first two records, but it was on their two records they broke through with Cloud Factory and King of Nothing. Uh, of course, like those had like some of the hits like Pisces and Outlander and some of their like big early hits. And then when they started having a whole hype machine behind them, they had like their macro album and the Wallflowers album in 2021. And I kind of fell off the train a bit with Ginger because the thing with them, like they lost like something that they had on the first two records where they are very good band technically where like they have like all the technical prowess and proggy skill in the world but they don't they weren't really putting out a lot of riffs and basically tatiana still a great singer great performer very like one of the best front women really front singers of anybody uh around today but uh, if the instrumentation that's under it isn't that great, it's like it's hard for her to write stuff, good stuff over it. And most of the new stuff has been weak, but this song is. It's while well, I'm not like super crazy about it, I do like it more than a lot of their recent material. This falls under a category of what a problem for me with a lot of modern metal gets under is that it's just tones, man. And it's like I've heard that band. Like, and I'm not talking about Ginger. I'm just saying I've heard that band. Yeah, that style of band. And it's just, that is like a widespread, I mean, it's really a problem across modern metal because the the new technology and how condensed a lot of those guitar sounds are makes it real hard to sound different. And uh, I will say that the vocal production was flat for the on this for me. Uh and I don't know necessarily why, but I, to me, this was it, nothing was wrong with it. It was just about as meh of anything I feel like I listened to on this on this run, um, which is kind of disappointing because that's one of those bands that I've wanted to give more of a chance uh, because I know they're good. They they are good. She's good. I saw them live last year, right. and they put on a great show. But things though. Like outside, like the big songs from their earlier records, like the songs did sound kind of samey when they were playing stuff from the last two records. And like I said, it, it, it it's not you know necessarily their fault either, but because like I said, a lot of bands I feel like just fall under that category. It's just like I said, I feel like you could have plug and played like a hundred bands with her singing over it, and it would have sounded this way. And I'm like, uh. yeah, like I heard like a. Uh, Another podcast uh, I listened to that was talking about the song, they actually like, had an interesting way of putting it, where uh, it sounds like, because her vocal style is very influenced by a lot of R&B and pop and stuff like that, uh, for her melodic vocals at least. And like she said, like they said that it sounded like uh, when you take a pop song and then put metal instrumentation under it. Yeah. Like when you do like a remix of like a pop song, like some, like I remember there was like a whole lot of like metal covers of like, bad romance by lady gaga shit back in the day or something along those lines and it sounded like it just like the vocal didn't fit with the instrumentation yeah. as well well like i said it's just i would say it's just the, the 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 there nothing was stand out like i said i feel like it's just kind of like a cut and paste kind of sound uh and like i said i i don't want to hate on it because i didn't think the song was bad at all i just there was nothing for me to latch on to get excited and be like all right this is a band i want to listen to more of um which is a damn shame because like i said i do think they're good i think but i just think so many bands fall into that because like i said recording is what it is now 
Yeah, and really, people. like, if it wasn't for, like, Tatiana's charisma as a vocalist, like, this song wouldn't stand out too much, like, at all, really. And, like, this is an improvement over the recent stuff I've heard from their re- last records. So, <laughs> this is, like, better than what they have been doing. Yeah, and if eyes. you're man on it, then, damn. Because... This this seems like the shit I feel like you you're like all about. So <laughs> <laughs> like, there's definitely a lot of like cook, like copy paste cookie cutter bands. And I didn't like really expect metal. this to be like in as much agreement on this particular one. <laughs> I was expecting to kind of poo poo on it, and <laughs> you be like, eh. well, like usually like there's I mean there are bands like that, and I I can probably name a bunch off the top of my head that are like that. But uh, Ginger's been one like. I was like on the hype train when like when the Pisces song came out and like the records, the songs from those first two records. Uh, but then it's just been kind of like a little bit of letdown for like for me. Yeah, like I said, I've, I've never heard anything offensive, <laughs> but it's like I said, it's just it's the, the just flat. Everything seemed flat for me. Yeah, this one was a little bit on flat, but like it, I feel like it is a step in a better direction and <clears throat> hopefully they'll be able to like build on the sound and like you know, bring back a little bit of the rawness and songwriting focus that they had in the earlier records because if they do that then they'll be in much good spirits they don't have to be super technical all the time lean into the groove don't lean that hard to the technical i think they'll be fine <clears throat> but speaking of offensive though as we're talking about offensive stuff uh marilyn manson <clears throat> the guy who's been originally was only offensive to your conservative parents back in the nineties and early two thousands. And then eventually became offensive to everybody with basic common decency in the past few years, uh, has been in the midst of doing his comeback, uh, to her. He's a uh, well, come back in general. Uh, he hasn't released anything in like fi- any new music in five years until now. Uh, he's in the midst of a comeback tour with, a wonderful lineup of bands opening up for Five Figure Death Punch and playing along with Slaughter to Prevail, who are two controversial bands in their own right on that one. Yeah, which it kind of makes it even funnier that this song is kind of the way it is. Yeah, like I made like I don't know if you saw it or not, but like I did like they, a, the trailer, the honest yeah. trailer of the tour, which did real well on the old TikTok there. Uh, it's just pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, Marilyn Manson, in case you've been living under a rock or just recently getting to the rock and metal world, uh, Marilyn Manson, big singer that had his big heyday in the 90s and early 2000s, uh, came under fire in the past five years for being essentially just a giant asshole, uh, having an abusive partner in relationships, uh, I mean. grooming like underage girls to like get them on the bus and all that. Which, you know, go figure somebody that... Had a terrible upbringing and became a fucking god to everybody that had a terrible upbringing would do fucked up shit. Yeah, like, I guess we should have believed really him. really surprised. <laughs> I guess should have believed him when he was talking about being, like, the, the scary asshole and stuff back in the 90s and 2000s. We were like, oh, we thought this was just an act. I didn't know you were really that douchebag. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> uh, but, that being said, the song's actually kind of good. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the thing with Marilyn Manson because, like, okay, like of course, like before this whole controversy stuff started happening, uh, the one caveat was that his music was always solid, still, especially from the Tyler Bates records, like till now, and like his live performances, like were not the greatest because he was always off his face on whatever drug he takes. Uh, but in For the a studio, while, it was cheeseburgers, dude. <laughs> yeah, like he he his face was getting real chunky. I don't know. That's probably just booze. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, booze does no fat shaming here. I mean, we we don't have room to talk. Like even when Marilyn Manson was at his fattest, we were competing with him. <laughs> oh, right, I, was, I was whooping his ass. I don't know what you talking about. <laughs> it wasn't competition. Uh, but now he's back. Uh, he's done his first live show this past weekend uh, on that uh, Five Figure Death Punch Slaughter Through Prevail tour. He's lost all the weight. He's a lot more lively on stage. His voice sounds solid. And his new song, pretty darn good, actually. Uh, the, it's kind of... It, it would be nice if the douchey people didn't make good music. <laughs> well, and the, the only thing that there is a caveat with saying... So, sonically, it's fine. It's just the context and content of said song to me is definitely like, let me cash in on 
the redemption arc. On the redemption arc. And but the thing is it's like, all right, well, how much of that is redemption arc? Yeah, it's like and he how- has a marketing team. He knows how to like there there's a there's a way. Which it's really hard to talk about redemption arc and then be like, Yeah, we're on tour with Slaughter to prevail. And yeah, like five if finger death fund. I mean, given like if there's anybody who's gonna be like take out the like the red flag of Marilyn Manson, it's the two bands that are like yeah, Slaughter to Prevail, who's like on like the cancel list for a lot of people for uh, several reasons, <laughs> like such as friggin' like apparently alleged homophobic statements, alleged transphobic statements, and confirmed former Nazi affiliations uh, for like Alex Terrible, the lead singer of that group. Then you have friggin' Five Figure Death Punch, where Ivan Moody was had restraining orders from his own family, uh, giant alcoholic, but he is currently six or seven years sober right now himself. Yeah, but he's um, still very much so screams, if you don't like it, get the fuck out. Yeah, the, the, yeah. The, yeah this, I don't know, like, it's been a while since they did, like, a, like you're a dumb motherfucker and a bar motherf- the, the motherfucker song. Whatever song that was, they yeah, did back in the day. It's just, ridiculous. I, I've seen that band live way more times than I've ever intended on. Because they're on every festival, especially Louder Than Life or anything local to hear. And they only got more obnoxious with their fucking America shit oh, yeah. as they went. It's but, just like, we're just going full America. Uh, which is you know whatever but yeah so like it, 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 that's the thing it's like I don't want to really fucking like give too many roses to said song <laughs> sonically it is fine it's good I actually was surprised because I don't give a rat's ass about Manson in the first place yeah, like, and I've, I got I got like three quarters of the way through it I was like fuck I actually kind of like this song yeah this song uh, but it's- like the context of the lyrics and just who he is and what he's doing right now it's just like you can't there's a percentage of me that just wants to go, all right, let's see if the dude becomes better. Because yeah. no matter what, I am kind of the guy that it's like we got to allow people to become better. Yes. We have to allow a path to redemption. Uh, it's and just hard to believe it. With you people. don't have to love them anymore and you don't have to like it, but at least allow them to get their path to what is better for them. But yeah, I just... That, that that was the thing. Like I hated that I was liking it a little bit, <laughs> but like <clears throat> you know, it, to me, there's always a little bit of disconnect with art and artists. Uh, it's really when you look at any of our heroes from back in the day, they were all kind of man children, and yeah, there's uh, they're not all the like bad people make good art a lot of the time. <laughs> I said that on the John Bass podcast. It's like, dude, the people that are throwing TVs out hotel windows and fucking doing blow and just t- taking advantage of women and this, that, and the other, yada, like, yada. Like, getting, they're, they're getting they're with, not, like, deaf underage groupies. They're all not this, so. mentally well-fucking people. So, like, again, pretty much every band that you like from, like, the 60s forward, you have to take with a little bit of grain. Uh, yeah, like, we, we, we like this, like, rebellious music, and, of course, the pe- a lot of the people that make that music are rebellious to not just, like, societal views and beliefs, but to... Our own beliefs sometimes, yeah. a lot of the time. So, like I said, yeah, I'll give him the space to to become better as far as just being open minded to the fact that he can be better. But very weird decisions with that tour, and like I said, this song is a little heavy handed. Yes. Uh, speaking of which, I haven't mentioned the name of the song yet. It's called "As Sick as the Secrets Within." Yeah. yeah. Well, and, as, as I said, <laughs> yes, as the first new music heavy <laughs> since his uh, 2020 album "We Are Chaos," which he did with Will and Jennings as his main collaborator for that one. Uh, it's kind of like a chill, mid tempo, post rock, goth rocky song, um, and it's pretty darn solid honestly uh the Baronson fans are eating it up who like never like canceled them or had a second thought about uh <laughs> saying a negative word towards them well, there's uh, the entire people that base their entire fucking personality around that guy oh yeah and that was still kind of do that was the introduction to goth culture for a lot of people back in our age group <clears throat> well it was like the next generation of of you know that the Aussies of the world where it was just like, all right, yeah, this dude's crazy. Yes. The wild rambunctious rock star who was also well-spoken in interviews and all that. It's had, like he had an intellectual side to him like back during that day. And even still does, uh, oddly enough, uh, at least he's, he's very well-spoken, but he's also a big asshole and has done a lot of assholey things. Uh, smart, charismatic people do a lot of bad shit too. 
exactly. But the song itself, if like just talking about the art alone, pretty solid song, pretty solid comeback song. I like it more than a lot of the We Are Chaos material. Uh, but uh, who knows? Like, hopefully, the man of Marilyn Manson can match the quality of the music that he's putting out as well, and also improve. Yeah, right now it's yeah. <laughs> right now we'll see uh, and also uh connected to that something that's uh sad news on my personal front uh reba myers uh lead guitarist for uh metalcore an alternative metal band code orange uh, was seen as part of marilyn manson's live band uh as his guitarist one of his guitarists uh which not the greatest look <laughs> reba why are you i know that paycheck just fat I know that paycheck's probably good, and the Code Orange just had a whole lot of setbacks in their recent history and touring and such, with like illnesses in the band you know, having to cancel tours and other stuff happening. But why Manson, man? Why'd you have to join up with Manson? Of well, all people, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe that's a uh, an ally in the redemption arc. Who knows? Uh, who, who, who knows? Uh, but more f- artists that aren't canceled yet <laughs> are potentially canceled. Uh, we have Undeath uh, with their new song "Brandish the Blade." Uh, it's the first single from their upcoming third album titled "More Insane," coming out October fourth. Uh, Undeath. Uh, I don't, don't know if you're familiar with Undeath at all. I'm uh, not. And I got about two thirds of this song. Fast forwarded a little bit. I was like, "All right, that's going exactly how I thought it would." Uh, so, uh, Undeath is one of the uh, more notable bands in what I've been calling the new wave of American death metal. Uh, they are a New York band, uh, but from they're S- Undeath, dude. Undeath from Syracuse. Uh, I think they're from Syracuse. They're from somewhere in New York, uh, and like they're definitely one of the more notable bands of this new crop of death metal bands. And their whole shtick is that they. Like, they kind of do the old school death metal thing and they don't take themselves too seriously. No. Uh, if you look at their, like, some of their song titles and album titles, they are, uh, their, their stuff's kind of, they're a little bit goofy with it. It's very tongue in cheek type stuff. Like, their last album was called It's Time to Rise, dot, 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 from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't, if you couldn't figure out, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. And, like, they have a lot of good songs. Oh, no. It's time to rise from the grave. That's, I don't know if I said that right. Yeah, false news, Dante. False news. Yo, don't it's time to rise from the grave. That was our last album in 2022. The new one's called, uh, like, more, like, fuck, fuck where's my notes? <laughs> Fucking more insane. Give it a goog, j <laughs> And this first song is titled Brandish's Blade. Interesting thing compa- with this song, uh, most notable thing with this song compared to their previous material, uh, they've always been a band that's been big on, uh, the songwriting aspect, like not just trying to compile a nice catchy, uh, string of riffs together, uh, but have actual like s- coherent song structures, verses, choruses, have like something you can latch onto. And with this one, vocally, uh, the vocal range has been expanded to have a lot more highs, a lot more discernible vocals instead of the like toilet gurgle <laughs> stuff they, that most death metal bands do. And it definitely like adds to, it highlights the songwriting aspect for Undeath. Uh, it makes it where, like, you can sing along to the songs now. You can, like, there's, like, a pre-breakdown call-out, which, big thing with the modern crop of death metal bands, a lot of hardcore influence uh, that's subtly, like, mixed in with the that's old school death metal. That's pretty much what songs. all those new bands are. Yeah, it's, it's like- hardcore kids playing death metal. That appeals to hardcore kids. A lot of obituary, both are an entombed influence yeah. in there. Uh, which, Undeath is definitely, like, one of the fun bands out of that crop. Uh, it's hard for me to pick a favorite out of like the new crop of uh, old school new old school death metal bands as people call it which i fucking hate which is why i call it the new wave of american death metal uh yeah, 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 don't get me started on genres <laughs> uh i'd say that out of that crop frozen soul is still my current favorite frozen soul and sangry sugaba of course are the two biggest ones out of that crop uh but there's also the next like tier bands like that like your undeaths your 200 stab wounds uh your i just want Devin swank to beat the shit of roddy radke god damn it. I, fuck yeah i want that to i know that's happen. like news. i wish we were podcasting that's, uh, that's old news at this point but god damn it <laughs> that is like oh i saw people still commenting about that on like radke and well, saying like, about god this. damn it please don't just i just want to see the big old ohio gorilla beat up with that freaking <laughs> like vegas dude I really, I want to see anybody do it, but the fact that I've been friends with that dude on Facebook well before Sangui Sugabog took off, which is crazy to me still, too. <laughs> I was just like, 
oh, that dude's in this band. Cool. And that name's fucking crazy. And the next thing you know, they're like- They're the, playing with Black Dolly Murder and shit. Like, yeah, the biggest underground thing running. And I'm like, uh, holy shit. I got to see him at Green Lantern, like with Frozen Soul before both, like when both their debut albums first came out. Yeah. And it was packed to the gills and wild. And uh, that man up close is definitely a big gorilla, of a silverback gorilla of a man. He's one of those ones on the fitness journey. I look at oh, him he, like, he does. He's I mean, also. I don't, I don't necessarily want care to look like that, but <laughs> it's definitely just like fuck. I like, could I could look closer to that. Hearing him in interviews, <laughs> he's a big football and pro wrestling guy. That's, you'd get along well with him. Oh, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's why we were friends on Facebook all these years. Probably. So. Uh, but yeah, Undeath, like with that new, uh, new, new death metal, which is like real nice quality stuff, nice fun uh, death metal there. Uh, and we have one more new song like out here, uh, the new singles to talk about. Lacuna Coil uh, with the new song called Hosting the Shadow featuring Randy Bly of Lamb of God fame. Uh, this song, uh, Lacuna Coil, of course, like they were... Uh, the other goth metal band of the early 2000s that was not called Evanescence, <laughs> as far as like their popularity, original heyday. Uh, even though they predate Evanescence by a number of years, funny enough. Uh, but they didn't take off in America until after Evanescence did, really. Yeah, I remember uh, Karma Code was like the... They they got on like Jimmy Kimmel. Like, kind of... This goes back to what I was <laughs> referencing earlier as far as like bands I liked as a fucking teenager. Like popping back up on my radar and i'd already kind of gone back down the lacuna coil like hole really? again and i was like holy shit dude it, like the only reason i quit liking that band is because you start listening to all the fucking metal fuckers just hate on it because it, <laughs> it, you know it's radio like popular and all that but man they are so fucking solid I, and i've gone solid. through their career like that where i'm talking about what i want to do with arch enemy now and actually go back yeah like, and I haven't done, like, full album listens through, but, like, I pretty much have heard something on each album I fucking enjoy and like, and I realized how much the old stuff stuck with me. Like, I put on Karma Code pretty recently, actually, and realized, like, I remember, like, the first seven, eight songs on that album, like, heavy, heavy. I was like, oh, okay. And then um, Coma Lies uh, was the album that came out originally, and I ain't gonna lie, fucking, I was like 12, 13, hitting puberty, and she's like one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen uh, in my fucking life. Italian beauty, Christina Scabia. So, you know, that might have had a lot to do with <laughs> life uh, back then, too. But, like I said, man, I really enjoyed that band as a kid, and uh, I've just realized that going back to it, it's like, that, that's just one of those bands that get lost the time, because you know, fucking metalheads are finicky, and Fucking, you know, if you're listening to mainstream shit, you're, you're you know, like mainstream it's... quotations because they were never that big. But, uh, they, you know, you get on Jimmy Kimmel, yeah, you're fucking. You're, you're big enough uh, if you're on Jimmy Kimmel. And is there a better guest vocalist than Randy Bly at this point? I mean, anytime he's jumping on a track, it's it's fun times. I've never heard, like, a like because a lot of that stuff can be uninspired because it's just, <clears> like, it's just God, like, we like, got this guy to do this. Yeah. And I swear, it's like every time he has done anything, uh, Skull and Bones with fucking Overkill. Uh, He's guessing on a lot of Joss The Gojira. Uh, fuck, why am I losing that? I Adoration for none. Okay. Uh, that track uh, was phenomenal. Uh, I know doing like when they did like the Wake Up Dead cover, like with Dave Mustaine kind of in the fold. Yeah. Like everything I've heard him do guest vocals on, it's just like. I think it's just because his vocal style is so, like, he's the cleanest, dirtiest vocal there is. Like, I've never heard somebody so <laughs> legible screaming. Like, he's very articulate. And with a band like Lacuna Coil, this is the one that shouldn't have maybe worked, honestly. I know they have, like, the... They have Andrea Farrow, who's their normal screaming vocals. But he's not... <clears throat> he ain't doing that either, you know? Not the specific with the Randy style, but interesting with Lacuna Coil is that like I started jumping back on the Lacuna Coil train in 2014 uh, with their Delirium album because what happened there was they got a new guitarist like on the album and they went way heavier like from Delirium onward. Yeah. Like they like already were kind of like the kind of like uh, goth rocky type stuff where Andrew Farrow he was doing 
he didn't do like full on shouty. He was doing like more of like a melodic shouty vocal. Nah. I created Cena Sabres doing like kind of like a typical like a uh, goth rocky clean vocal. But then on Delirium, she was starting doing symphonic highs and operatic style shit, and he started doing death growls. Nah. They just went more extreme in their vocal styles. The match, the intensity that was. Increasing the music. This is actually by far my favorite single of this batch. Of yeah, it's singles. The, fav- the favorite one. Yeah, like, uh, like I said, man, I'm really fucking. I, I'm just giving Lacuna Coil their flowers. Like, I, I, they they are t- consistently strong. And I know that, like, I don't know if they ever quite reached their their heights of what they were, you know, popularity wise. But like, so there's still a notable band like on Spotify. They're currently at eight hundred thousand monthly listeners. Yeah. So there's still a Big band, they're not yeah. mainstream, mainstream, but big enough. I, I just, that also might be like over a million when a new album. I just out, feel like so. that's one of those bands that could could s- still honestly fucking have a breakthrough and be like one of them like top, top, top tier bands. But like for a band that's, I guess, never quite gotten that far. I guess, yeah. But yeah, no, I got kind of. Like I said, a lot of stuff that I've listened to in high school, I've kind of gone back to, and it was like the stuff that, like, it was just like I liked it, but so many other people talk shit about it. And you're getting on the internet, you're starting to see hate for everything. The like, Kona Close was one of those bands that was not getting love from you know underground <laughs> metal right. folk. And uh, to be fair, like even the people that are into you know the more mainstream, more melodic stuff, it's not a band I feel like a lot of people talk about, like in circles around me not super not super often um you know whereas like you know fuck kill switch will come up all the time go jerry come up all the time just because like they were like different bands that like i would say that they're just as good as just they're different style yeah they're not like the like uh the the uh metal elitist and you you would think having that chick in your band they usually that's like a like gives you a boost yeah if you're good it gives you a boost uh, there are like, of course, like female led bands that like don't quite hit that level, and but it's usually though because the music doesn't match. Like you're uh, not to call some band names out here, but like your New Year's Days, your Butcher Babies, yeah. uh, bands that like yeah, that she's style. never, she never, she never had to be that. Yeah, she she was <clears throat> she was very. Uh, now, granted, back in you know the early two thousand, Revolver was doing the hottest women in metal like yeah, back- magazines. <laughs> But to be fair, I mean, all the women that participated in those were, they were into it. It, was, I mean, it didn't seem like a... It didn't seem malicious. It's a it's a thing you look back on where you're like, man, but like, you know, at the same time, it's not like these chicks were like naked. I mean, exceptions of some of the people you just named. But... Uh, yeah, but your babies. But uh, a lot of those chicks, it. there's just them, you know? They, they dress like them and like, you know, fuck. She, she's never like had to lean on sexuality to be a badass. No, like most thing. of her like stage where I see is just like fully covered, just very stylish. And she's from an era <laughs> that that's... It was either, yeah, one way or the other. Yeah. The thing is like, I think some like, this is still somewhat on topic where I'm thinking like the... Like a lot of like women vocalists and metal get a lot of flack for like getting accusations of using their sexuality to like try to sell records. But here the thing though with that is like if you are a front if you're a singer, if you're the front woman or front man of a band, you're supposed to be exuding charisma. And usually just like exuding charisma as a woman, that just naturally comes with like being attractive, like being like Basically, you're putting out like a confident vibe that makes you attractive. And for men who dominate like a lot of the metal listening, all that, they think, oh, you're trying to be sexual. But men do the same thing. Hey, and they say, don't let, me, let me tell you something. I've lost 40, 50 pounds in the, since February. I've gotten way more attention I ever have. <laughs> and I have been a lot more confident. And it's worked for me. So, yeah, sorry, guys. Women that are actually like fucking beautiful that get on stage that fucking do the damn thing. It's my. It's just fucking them being them. Yeah, like you're supposed to be like putting out that rock star charismatic energy, and it's an attractive thing. Like no matter the gender, and like it's like it's something that like women get unfairly think like flagged for because women in general are just like better at being used to like looking attractive in everyday life. And if you're doing it for performance, like of course you're gonna be like better than that than most of the guys are. Yeah, and you know, never mind that like the dudes that like were you know getting off on their sexuality who looked like Mick Jagger back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I'll take a, uh. I'll take a, you know, whatever. I'll take the women of the day <laughs> way, way, way over Mick Jagger. But yeah, now, like I said, though, she, uh, 
It's just a band that's been fucking been around fucking forever. There's been no controversies like around anybody in that band. Like they've just consistently. There's just been like no set of grindstones. Just they, keep. They consistently records. have been there, and for whatever reason, it hasn't like exploded past that level. Yeah. But you know, they're still probably one of the you know fifty biggest. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you even fucking measure that anymore because there's so many bands. But there, there's a lot of bands. But they're definitely on the upper echelon of metal bands. Like with at least with how many. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll take it to Hunter. They're a top hundred. Yeah. Metal entity. And uh, speaking of which, they are celebrating their thirtieth anniversary as a band this year because they first formed <laughs> in 1994. <laughs> Goddamn. See, there's so many bands. I mean, fucking, it's like, you know, we can keep harping on Gojira, but that's because I just know so much about it. But, like, yeah, it's it's always weird when it's like, yeah, that started in 96, actually. It's just the first major album didn't come out till 2001. Yeah, like, it, it takes that long as a metal and band. And then, to like, get the that first that album that actually got U.S., like, broad attention was, you know, from Mars the Series in, like, 2005. So it's oh, like. Yeah. It takes a while to get that notice. Like, get, yeah. We're six Stone Toker six years deep. Where's our international recognition? Yeah, we got uh, <laughs> we got like four more years, I guess. If you go off to go Jira there, uh, 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 but yes, yeah, like Lakota Coil's like uh, new song, hosting the shadow of Randy Bly. Quite a quality track from them as well. Uh, that's all the singles we have to talk about. So uh, the only thing that's really left on the docket are is like the new album releases that came out this past Friday. Uh, but there's like a handful here. Like it's still like that lean part of the year uh, where there's not a whole lot that's releasing. Uh, for this past week, though, the biggest thing that came out was the new uh, Smashing Pumpkins record uh, called Agori Mori May. I think I'm saying that right. And that was like pop up, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, there was like, no no hype. Up about there's no that. singles. Like they uh, announced the album only two weeks prior to release and released no singles. So Didn't you Jack White pop up with one too. Yeah, he did. He did. I actually listened to that. I, <laughs> I, I do have all the things I've listened to. I actually listened to the new Jack White. I saw it pop up. I didn't I haven't took the time to listen to I've it. I've been a big fuck Jack White kind of guy. <laughs> and I actually enjoyed it. So I'll, I'll throw that out there. Well, maybe I'll give that one a listen. I, the the pop up Jack White record actually and uh our boys and uh that the drummer from Wormson and Wee Demon was actually the one I saw post about it. Really? And I was at work and I was <clears throat> feeling my listening to all this new stuff energy and I saw it pop up and I was like, fuck it, let's check out this Jack White album. Because he had said it was like a little more guitar Central. oriented. He actually said it was like some of the more just guitar oriented shit since like the white, you know, early white stripe stuff. Nice. And I was like, all right, well, let me check it out. And I didn't find myself hating it. You know, like I said, usually Jack White pisses me off and I don't <laughs> know why. And maybe I'm just getting older and I need to give uh, that more of a chance. Yeah, but I haven't really liked Jack White since White Stripes era, unless he's doing ranking tours. So. Sorry, not to interrupt the show there, yeah. but uh, that's something I listen to. Usually, <laughs> when you name all these records, I'm like, uh. But speaking of being guitar forward, that's kind of like the big draw with this new Smash the Pumpkins record. It's their most guitar forward record in over a decade, really. Because uh, I'm surprised that they came out with another record this soon. Because last year, they just released the triple disc length uh, fucking uh, concept album that they had. Uh, the fucking the names escaping me the fucking ah, i should have had this all on a list eh, atom yeah they had like this like the atom, Goog, J-Mo. like the atom atum <laughs> record which they released i think over two different years uh and it was like three disc of just like very atmospheric artsy poppy stuff where there was like a song here and there that was okay but overall wasn't really received that well and then this year, pop up with another record, that surprise record, of Gory Warren May. And it's, I listened to the whole thing. It's the best Pumpkins record in forever. Like, I'm surprised he has time while he's running a fucking shitty wrestling company. Yeah, he's I, he's a freaking riding machine recently. Actually, I can't say shitty. I haven't watched NWA in a minute. But <laughs> I remember I, I, I got on a spell with it and I kind of dug it and then like everybody left. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Gory Warren May by Smashing Pumpkins. If you've been wanting the 90s style guitar pumpkins along with uh, Jimmy Chamberlain's strong drumming to match with that one, uh, give that one a listen. I liked it a lot. Uh, there's also Anne Berlin. You remember Anne Berlin? That band, that Christian band that had the feel good drag song back in the day. Remember that? I don't know shit about fuck dude. <laughs> well, Anne Berlin is back, uh, with the first record in a while called Vega. Uh, they were like one of the, during that, they're part of that early 2000s Christian rock boom. Uh, they had like kind of like a little bit of a post hardcore sound to them, a little bit of like, uh, alt metal like style to them. 
Uh, big thing with this one, though. You just said a lot of words I don't <laughs> like in conjunction with each other, but uh, I'll let you. I'll let you talk about it. <laughs> well, the let, let with, the people know. Well, Anne Berlin, other people know who Anne Berlin is. Uh, but they're back for the record, Vega. Uh, the thing with, <laughs> well, yeah, I hope other people may know who they are. <laughs> the thing with this record that's really notable is that, like, apparently, uh, they are. Uh, this is a comeback album of sorts for them because I haven't released one in like almost a decade. Uh, but their lead singer, whose name escapes me, uh, it's the Easter of Aiden Berlin. <laughs> Easter. He said Made he's not doing again. He said he's still recording with the band, but he's not touring full time with them. So. For their live vocalist, they uh, got Maddie Mullins from the band Memphis Mayfire to be their live vocalist now. Hey, I know that name. Yeah, uh, I remember he's a guy that got somewhat canceled, but people just ignored that cancellation for stuff. Uh, but hey, yeah, canceled doesn't really work. Not really. Uh, but yeah, he's featured on two of the songs on the record, the two singles uh, that were on it. And to be fair, those songs are pretty good. And considering I don't really like Memphis Mayfire much. That's that's a that's a accomplishment. I saw them live with Seven Dust. Uh, wasn't good. Uh, at least I didn't like them uh, when I saw Memphis Mayfire. Uh, but these songs that, with uh, Maddie Mullins, pretty darn good. I have to admit. Uh, we also have a Night in Texas uh, with their new album Digital Apocalypse. Black and Deathcore from Australia. It sounds exactly what you expect Black and Deathcore to sound like. Uh, like a. <laughs> Faust is Australian for beer. It's a little weird that they call the night in Texas and they're from Australia. That's that's a little bit of a. I just want a blooming onion now. Blooming onion, fucking Outback's delicious. <laughs> I wonder if like Australians are actually like offended by Outback. Uh, I think they are. Like you know, how, I've like, never heard you Australian like, say good you, things. You, about you it. pop a Olive Garden in front of like an Italian family, they'll shoot you in the kneecap. You know, like, <laughs> I don't wonder if Australians like, oh, I'll feed uh, you to my pet gator. <laughs> <laughs> you bring, but, uh, me, you bring me that I'll back. I'll feed you to my gator. <laughs> I don't know what the accent became. That sounded Scottish. More so Australian. <laughs> Whatever. Suck on my chocolates. I'll do balls. Jesus it's Christ. the only one I got. Kane with the voice box. <laughs> uh, but yeah, not in Texas. <laughs> digital apocalypse. <laughs> Uh, I only listen to like a handful of songs from it. It's 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 Black and Deathcore. It's it's that. It's not. I didn't give it a full listen, so I can't really judge it. But it, it, it was solid from what I heard. We also have uh, <laughs> Mr. Misery with their new self titled record. Um, they are a band that's on AFM Records. They are a Swedish melodic metal band. Uh, with a lot of uh, horror-themed theatrics to their style and sound. Uh, the vocalists, like, they're kind of an interesting mixture of sounds and styles that you would still hate, probably. Uh, they're vocalists... We're positive around here we're now, positive, right? All right. The part of them that you would like with Mr. Misery is that, like, the vocalist, when he's doing his, like, raspy, more aggressive vocal uh, and the instrumentation, sounds a lot like Children of Bodom. Okay. Like they're they have that Swedish like kind of classically like guitar like melodethy sound mm -hmm. uh, when they're doing that. But then the melodic side of them sounds like it's straight up emo. Like the the it's the and their aesthetic. If you saw a picture of them, it's hot topic goth. You know, it's funny about the that style of vocal and. You know, correct me if you think I'm wrong on this, but like the band we just played with in Nashville, Titans of Siren, kind of had that like vocal going on a little bit, a little bit, and but like, yeah, fuck these guys. <laughs> um, I just showed them a picture of what they look like, and it's very <laughs> Halloween hot topic aesthetic. But it's a it's another <laughs> thing for me that as I've gotten older and I'm not getting bombarded with that voice all the time, I can find those voices and be like, all right, that ain't too bad. You can appreciate it just a little bit. Yeah. Now I'm a uh, I'm much more softer on my on my full amount of hate, but it, it, there's still plenty. He's getting softer and nicer in his old age. There's still plenty in there where I'm just like, God damn it. <laughs> But like I said, they, the, the Titans of Siren dudes had that little twinge of it. Like I said, it wasn't heavy handed, but it, it when you have a band like that, goddamn, they were so crazy. They they were they were very fun. Like, I would say uh, hanging off rafters, freaking jumping off stage and on stage, way younger and energetic than we were. <laughs> yeah, but, that was actually I should kick 
fucking karma vulture in the shins. It's like, <laughs> well, all right, could you put them like after us, maybe? <laughs> 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 fucking hanging off balconies and shit. They're, they're pretty fucking wild. Beer bonging through pool noodles and whatever. Shout out to Titans of Siren from uh, where are they from Nashville. Yeah, every band from they. Uh, shout out everybody on that particular yeah, show. Karma fucking, vulture, Omen Bringer. Shout out Daikaiju. We just had a really good weekend. Daikaiju, they're fucking awesome. We just played with them this past Saturday at uh, here in Lexington. Fun times as always. Uh, they're, they're a great band. If they're coming to New York City and they tour so much, they most likely are. Uh, go see them. You will not regret it. Yeah, and just you know, wear, wear flame retardant clothing, maybe. Yeah, they they were, were getting a little. They, they were getting a little close. They were getting a little. Carried I away. saw like <laughs> like I, like the drummer was like spraying the thing, and there was a guy walking past. And he almost walked in the stream. I was like, oh god, no. Please, yeah, no, it please. was. Uh, I was like, please don't get banned. That was one of the craziest fucking shows I think I've played as oh. far as. Like I said, it looked like a bomb went off in Alice. It was wonderful. It was wild. Uh, yes, Mr. Misery. <laughs> yeah, now fuck go. this band, dude. That's why. That's why <laughs> I started talking about. Home- See, that's what I'm, I'm going to start doing. That every time you bring up somewhere, I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm just going to start talking about the homies a little bit. <laughs> well, here's a band that you may or may not like. Uh, a band called Austin Blute, uh, with their new album. <laughs> Sounds like a cologne. Uh, Infacelt. Int- in fest, I don't know what that means. It's in German. Uh, but they are basically a German Amana Marth worship band. Like, they're, they're straight up <laughs> Viking metal. That sounds like the best thing or the worst thing. I'm not sure. Their music is good. Like, it is good. But it's like, if you know who Amana Marth is. I would hope to fucking God anybody that fucking listens to this podcast would know who Amana Marth <laughs> is. But yeah, I might be giving too much credit. But the baby, like they're, they're still very Europe. They're popular in America, but they're a very European style band. Uh, but yeah, this band essentially a monomarth and with German lyrics, uh, which I just recently learned that there were German Vikings. That was something I was first. I was like, why are you Germans do going so hard on the Viking thing? And then I realized, oh, they're I learned from, apparently from Holger that there's German or Swiss German Vikings. Apparently, uh, I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, <laughs> So like, uh, season of the witch put out an album recently too. <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal. Listen to that. Shout uh, out to homies. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, Austin Blute's new record and Uh What I heard of it was pretty dope. They lean more black, me- black and melodic death metal than Monomark does. That's their like other big thing that switches up a bit <laughs> from them. <laughs> Sorry. And finally, we have something that's not metal. Something more on the. Uh, like the rock leaning stuff is blues pills uh they're actually fucking tight yeah blues pills with the new album birthday uh 70s inspired swedish hard rock psych rock band uh i have a like female lead vocals like they're a uh, really quality rock band from like the songs i've heard of them i uh, definitely got that 70s inspired stuff which apparently sweden's really big on a lot of 70s rock stuff yeah i there's one album of theirs i wore the fuck out and i can't remember what it's called but yeah, no, I'm actually super familiar with that band. That chick fucking sing, sings her ass off. It's very like the Joplin vein of just singing fucking vag out. I was going to say balls <laughs> out, but... Just vag out. <laughs> she's fucking... Yeah, no. Uh, the records are... They have the self-titled record, which is the most popular one, uh, Holy Moly, which is 2020. And uh, their newest one is called Birthday, which I think that was because like uh, while the recording sessions of this record... Uh, blues pills. Uh, like she, the lead singer, she found out she was pregnant in the studio. Uh, while they were recording this one. Yeah, the self-titled, the part, opening two tracks were fucking baller. Like if I had to recommend somebody to get into this band, High Class Woman and fucking Ain't No Change is fucking great. Oh yeah, like they they are a very quality like hard rock band. Uh, I they, didn't realize they had that much shit, so I need to get on it. Yeah, they have a, a lot, good amount of material. I believe it's three albums they have out. Currently. That's the thing with Spotify. Sometimes, like you, you'll get it come across your radar, and then if you just don't do that little extra click, you're like, it's "Oh like, shit, I something." Yeah, but yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely will check that out. Actually, yes. they, like I said, that's one of my hey something that you'll check out. Yeah, possibly. now they're the shit. Uh, Wind Rider put out. I'm not long. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, Wind well, Rider is actually the uh, show sponsor for this one. Oh well, there you go. Hey, yeah. revival, baby. It's, uh, it's, it's revival is coming out. Like I'm, it's gooder than fuck, my guy. I don't know where I'm gonna put the uh, the show sponsor in this. It's probably already played at this point in the podcast because I might put it somewhere in the middle. Uh, but yeah, Wind Rider. <laughs> uh, you probably already heard it. The song "Motorcycle Witches" <laughs> on their album "Revival" on Electric Valley Records. 
I need to give it a few more listens, like to fully encompass it. But it's it's fucking quality. Yes, like shout out to the Wind Rider peeps from Tennessee. They are <laughs> very quality quality band. Uh, we love those guys. I know. I just commandeered this entire segment. <laughs> it, it makes it more fun that way. <laughs> like I'm more excited to do the album reads now, just so you can talk shit. <laughs> it's, fun. Uh, it's fun. Uh, but yeah, that's all we have for you on this podcast this time. Uh, this is fun. Like, yeah, see, y'all <laughs> say what? Well, so see y'all in a year. Say what? What's it? See y'all in a year. I'll God. be back. Oh God! Like, yeah, so like we, like we, like trying to do the podcast like fully again. Uh, David might not be present for every episode, but I, but I, I'll be here. And please still listen to those episodes too. Biggest thing for me, I, I just don't want to come on and just fucking poo poo shit for an hour yes i'm trying like, to like and we were talking a lot about like kiss and like shit and it's just like yeah, there's a whole stint of like every every like news story was about kiss or skid row or and Motley it's Crew. yeah and it's fun to talk a little bit of shit but like when you're just yeah like i don't know i, I was just and plus like I, I i admire your brain to be able to soak in so many different new things for me, like I, just, it ends up becoming like a blur. It's str- it's a and, mush. And like I want to, like I want to, if I'm into something, I want to be fully into something, and I, oh, just, yeah. I just can't just be listening to a bunch of shit I don't like. You know, like I don't know that that yeah. was like that was like getting to to because like I said, it was like the single segment was hard. Yeah, I'd like to revisit the albums thing, but I think we should just fucking like try just just do the bands uh, that we actually fucking. You know, no, oh, yeah. no, we like. That's part of like why, I, like part of like with the format. <laughs> By the way, with the Olympic thing, we might want to do that Gojira episode maybe a little soon. Yeah, actually, you know, that's good time to maybe that'd be a good time to do it. Good time to maybe time so. to do the maybe stuff. maybe we'll, maybe we'll go ahead and get this rocking next week again. We'll maybe. see. This would be a good time. To, I like, thought do about suggesting outbreak. that to you, but I was going to wait till we got on here and maybe tease it. So yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's an idea that works for me. Honestly, I need to. Do more full album listens of the classic uh, or the early Gojira records myself, honestly. I really don't need to study. I just need to ponder. <laughs> just need to ponder. Ponder the orb. Yeah. Cause ponder the whale. There's there's a lot there for me. So. Oh, yeah. Like, I need to do like to do that. Because I, like, only jumped on the Gojira train from uh, really Magma onward. I did listen to La Font Sauvage a lot. And that's where I first heard Gojira. But I really, really got into him on Magma. <laughs> From uh, Mars is serious, baby. And oh, then yeah. uh, I know this. I know the big songs from Mars is serious. And then of uh, I literally, because you know, it wasn't just as easy as getting on the internet at the time. I'm pretty sure it still had dial up. <laughs> Goddamn, um, we're old enough for dial up. Went to CD Central and uh, got Terra Incognita shipped from France oh, yeah. for like forty five dollars. I remember, you, yeah, like and, this is uh, how big Gojira, like David, like Gojira before they were Olympic famous and cool, and yeah. Grammy nominated and all that. I, so. say, I remember when From Mars the Series came out, they f- kind of like a few months later put the link out in the states. So I got that at a CD store too. But um, and like I said, it was weird. Actually, you know, funny enough. And, you know, just because we're wrapping up here, I'll try to make this quick. <laughs> the r- reason I got into the back into Godzilla movies was that I was reading the fucking little. It was like a single page blurb because like Revolver used to have just single page blurbs on like five or six bands, like in the, at the opening of the magazine. And it was like just like a one page interview, like three questions, four questions. But like in the corner, it was like a did you know? And it had a little picture of Godzilla. And I was talking about what that Gojira was, you know, the name. Th- and that they were originally called Godzilla, this, that, and the other. And it just kind of sparked the interest to go back to those. And I think I probably rented fucking something from Blockbuster. Yeah, let's go way back, buddy. Oh, fucking Blockbuster. So I think I rented some Godzilla Ooh. movies from Blockbuster at the time. And fucking. Do Gen Z kids know what a Blockbuster is? Yeah. I mean, fuck them if they don't. Do we even know any? <laughs> I know I I have like three Gen Z friends. Okay. Maybe so I they're not on Facebook. That's that's the <laughs> one weird thing yeah. I, about them. None of them are on Facebook anymore. Well, that's that's hilarious. But <laughs> but yeah. So Gojira multi layered uh, appreciation for me because like I said, it pretty much reopened my little childhood imagination to giant monster movies again, and so all comes full circle back. Started with Gojira on a podcast and with Gojira on a podcast. So yeah, uh, maybe we'll do that next weekend. We might do that. I have to get, but I mean, David doesn't have to re-listen to anything, but I have to get my listening, like, like headphones on and 
uh, not too hard. I I like Gojira's one of my favorite bands. I do like a lot of the material. I just need to do the full album listens of yeah. the earlier stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's something to look forward to. Bring back the podcast and like the album ranking too as well. And so that David can yell at me that like my favorite Gojira record. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> no. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. Now, like I said, I figured figured at least get a couple in here, and you know, if I if I'm not around for a few, I'm not around for a few. But like I said, I definitely want to do it. From time to time, for sure. John, oh, John Bass podcast got me back on the podcast uh, world. And, shout out to John Bass. And, Comedian. Uh, so check out that episode. Uh, yeah, so that was a shout out to his podcast. Like episode David 42 was, of that. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know the name. I don't know. Long Just story. look for David Smug on the John Bass podcast. Yeah, I had a lot of fun doing that, and it kind of re-sparked my interest in wanting to go ahead and got do this itch again. Got going again. Yeah. So I'm done talking. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, thanks for listening to this like re- comeback episode of the Heavy Haystack Podcast. Uh, if you want to uh, ask a question of the pod, uh, just message on one of the Heavy Haystack socials or email us at theheavyhaystack at gmail.com. Yeah, it'd actually be crazy to do a QA. and a Yeah, if, like, we'll definitely if y'all do actually give us questions. <laughs> if you message us, give us questions. You can do questions on Spotify or you can do questions on via the email, and we will answer or read them out and respond to them if you are uh, so inclined. Uh but make sure to follow us on like the YouTube's, uh, the Heavy Haystack, uh, the friggin' the Instagram at Heavy Haystack and all that jazz. Like, and make sure to follow David's personal Instagram page, uh, Doctor David Dorito. As Storm well. Storm Toker official, Holler Doom, Storm Toker. Look up all those. We have pages. a lot of pages. We have a lot of hats. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, hopefully, it won't be a year till the next uh, podcast episode comes out. <laughs> but uh. That that's all I believe we have for this week. So peace, love, music, and we shall see you all next time. Sayonara. Did you just nut into the microphone? <laughs> Jesus Christ.